Hello, everyone. So glad you're here. My name is Christy Rice, and I am obsessed with watercolor. Uh, you are joining us live right now, and of course, this is going to be available for replay. So I always want to say hello to Team Replay. And if you are Team Replay, go ahead and comments and just let us know. Uh, friends, today we are going to be going step by step with roses and peonies. There won't be any inspiration images today. We're going to kind of do loosey-goosey modern watercolor uh, and just kind of free form, free flow from our imaginations. And of course, you can follow along with me. So just a couple of things. I'm still going to be painting on ornaments today. Uh, these are bisqueware unfinished and they really mimic the feel of watercolor paper cold press watercolor paper uh, <clears throat> i'm going to start with a demo today on academy cold press watercolor paper um, and i'm going to go ahead uh, after this live and link uh, the previous lives in this series so you can get caught up if this is your first day joining us i'm so glad you're here let me know in comments where you're tuning in from We'd love to see love to see all those comments. Good morning, Monique and uh, Mar Marjorie and uh, from the Netherlands. Yes. Uh, okay. Someone says they're not hearing or seeing anything. Can you hear me? Let's just make sure everybody can hear. Um, uh, hello from Snow Snowy Michigan. Oh no, two a.m in australia okay thank you we have kelly with us today kelly is behind the scenes if you could say hello to kelly she's incredible she always um is putting up your questions answering your questions so we love having her kind of on the behind the scenes uh of this of these lives so thank you kelly wonderful good morning Shar. good morning madeline monique from brentwood it, oh okay uh, monique i gotta know what chili in california like what is chili is it going to tick me off when you tell me it's like 60 degrees? <laughs> Anywho. All right, friends. So we're going to head on down to the painting table and get this going. I, I can't wait. I, I love peonies and roses. Um, Kelly's going to go ahead and switch that camera. And uh, But I also really love, and I have to apologize because it is earlier in the day, friends, so the sun is a shining in the studio like crazy. I'm going to get rid of this. That is actually, um, you're seeing the shadow of my ruler on my painting table, which is crazy. I, I can't believe it created that much of a crazy shadow. All right. So let me, I want to get the palette in frame here. And this light is going to change like mad. It's going to just be wild today. Just, just hold on to your, hold on to your brushes, friends, because this light is going to be changing like madness. Okay. So let's start with a rose. I'm going to start with a number six round brush. I have my Art for Joy Sake palette. Um, it's this bad boy. You know, if you're new here, I am obsessed with watercolor friends so much that I design my own palette brushes and I'm in the process of designing other things because apparently I'm just extra. Anyway, I have my palette sprayed down and the colors are nice and juicy. Actually, I am feeling like a fresh palette today. Y'all, can, can anyone guess how many of these palettes I actually have going on my painting table? because it's kind of an obscene number. I'm just constantly using them. Um, I can't get enough of my own palette. I feel I actually did a TikTok yesterday um, because I do get a lot of questions about, you know, the palette that I go to again and again. I'm just mixing up a just a fun corally pink, a little bit of this blushy pink, which is a little creamy and a little bit of the red from my palette. And we're going to go ahead and dive into this um, I have, somebody says eight palettes, <laughs> not, not quite that many. Um, we're going to dive into this, this rose. So here's the thing with modern loose watercolor roses and maybe modern is a misnomer, but I think, you know what I'm talking about, the roses that kind of, um, 
are stylized. They are, um, they're just fresh and, and feel very immediate. I always start in the middle and I always start, I shouldn't say always, but I often start darker. And as I go out, things get lighter. So just a few little, I, I want to call them smiles or C curves in the middle. Each time I go back to the palette, I grab a different color that is in the family. So I started with that, that medium bright pink and then i picked up this fuchsia straight from the pan and then i'm going back to the pink and see how i'm creating the c curves now a couple of things as i go out from the center with my c curves the color gets less intense less saturated basically more water and the c curves get thicker longer larger does that make sense? Thicker, longer, and larger. See, I keep getting thicker and thicker and longer and longer. All right, this is a top few uh, rows. This is going to end up being, all right, I'm going to keep going out. I'm going back into that medium pink with a little more water on my brush. I reloaded. When you see my brush go off camera, um, uh, I am loading up with water or rinsing the brush. Marjorie has a question. Are your tutorials always available? And if so, where? Uh, yeah, Marjorie, all my tutorials are available on YouTube. So they're always there. The lives will end up being like a permanent part of my catalog on YouTube. All right, friends, going in with big C curves. Now I am pressing hard. I'm not pressing as hard as I can, but I'm pressing a lot harder than I was. I just grabbed water on my brush. I didn't reload with any color, continuing those C curves. Each time I start making a C curve though, I am touching another area of the rows, all right? And I'm going around and around. Now, something that I will start doing with um, that medium pink or not the darkest color that I've used, I'll start adding into the wet, I'll start adding detail, little ruffly sketchy moments. And this is just kind of a signature of my personal rose style. Now I've got the red on my brush. I've blotted it on a paper towel and I'm gonna start going into some of those lighter areas that are still wet and dabbing in some of that color. And basically what I'm trying to do is add some depth going in with a damp brush now that's clean and kind of dragging it along those marks I just made, blotting off some of that color because you don't always want to drag more color around. And you can start to see how I'm creating this depth. Let's show that again. I'm going to go right in here with a strong reddish pink. I'm going to go right in here with a strong reddish pink. I'm gonna go right in here. And then I'm gonna rinse my brush, blot it on a paper towel, go right next to that mark. This is called, um, this traditionally is called pulling, or I have uh, been known to call this uh, technique ombre, where you literally put down a color and then you keep adding water just below the color and it drags that color out and softens it. So there's kind of a basic Christy Rose. Good morning, Charlotte. <laughs> um, honestly, Elaine, the question about the ornaments is insane. And I, I, I typically can give you a supply list easily. But with these ornaments, it's been tricky. So um, we've actually, we are working with a supply from last year, what little we have left, because our supplier... Um, stopped making these ornaments and we've had a very hard time finding them again. We've had a couple folks say that they found something similar at a Michaels local to them. So you could check out Michaels. Um, we have not found any on Amazon, for example, yet. Um, what we're finding is uh, has a slick surface. So I'll be honest, we're kind of nervous because we have to restock for next season and we're not sure where we're going to do that. So anyhow, um, definitely not trying to gatekeep the ornament supplier. It's just, I don't have, uh, the information. I don't have it for you because 
for us and what we, with our understanding, uh, we, they are no longer making the, the company that we were working with. So we're still doing all of our research for next year. All right. So this was a nice little warm up. I'm just adding some crazy greenery here. Um, thank you, Karina. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Tiffany, good morning from Tennessee. Day three. Yay. Who has been here each of the days of this series so far? Uh, Alicia says, I'm a newbie and I can't seem to do loose painting any tips. Thank you, Kelly, for putting that up. That's such a good question. Um, I would say, honestly, um, and I will link the videos that I'm about to mention below. Um, so you can go ahead and take a look at them after today's live. I would start doing some uh, brush drills. Um, I have quite a few on my channel. And what they are, are specific uh, brush exercises that are very repetitive, but get you to be a lot more comfortable with the brush and what it can do. Because a lot of the power of loose watercolor painting, it, it comes with instinct and repetition. Um, so that is what I would recommend, to be quite honest, is brush drills. Um, and you will find things really improving rapidly for you once you get comfortable with your tools, mainly your brush. And brush drills are just a, a wonderful way to do that. So I will make, make sure that my series of brush drill videos are linked below after, after today's um, live. Um, Judy, I consider myself a Christy Rice lifer. Well, I appreciate that. Julie, thank you for being here every day. Ah, uh, love it. Love it. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Wrote in 70s, been here all three days. That's awesome. Let's get to the ornaments. Put this off to the side. Maybe we'll come back to it. And we're just going to apply kind of the same techniques. I've done a couple roses. I actually uploaded um, if you all are not aware, these ornaments are for sale. I do this once a year. Once a year, I release uh, studio samples, studio artwork. That's original artwork once a year. Um, and then I also once a year paint ornaments live and make them available on ChristyRice.com. If you hover your camera over that QR code, a URL will pop up and you can go ahead and check it out. Um, so they are, they are still available um, and they're signed and they're finished and they come in a gift box. They make a fantastic gift. And I always say these are the kind of ornaments that stay up year round, stay up year round. These are not, now next week I'm going to be painting some very holiday themed ornaments for sure as we get closer to the holidays. But this week I was like, you know, I'm going to keep it about floral. And now friends, I do hope you join me tomorrow. Uh, because tomorrow I am going doing a, something a little different. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to actually be pulling out some of the artwork I'm going to be making available in the studio release. Uh, the, and I'm going to be finishing paintings tomorrow that have been started um, over the last year in tutorials from this channel. Um, and in just personal work that I've done. And I'm going to be speaking to the, the, um, the question of how do you know, how do you figure out how to finish a painting, when a painting is done. Um, I'm going to be trying to address some of those big questions that I know many of you struggle with. And then, of course, after tomorrow's live, the paintings will be made available for sale Um on ChristyRice.com. And it's a fun time because I try to make the pricing really accessible, really affordable. Um, and so it's uh, it's a really exciting time of the year. Like I said, I only release my studio, my originals once a year. So anyway, I hope you will join me tomorrow for that. Um, I've started this rose on the ornament. I'm holding my brush. Can you see how I'm holding that brush today? Um, let me see here. You have taken my watercolor from one wash to anything I want. Oh my gosh. I love that. I love how you said that. What an honor to hear that from you. I appreciate that so much. 
Um, I, I, I just, I don't even know what to say. That's just such a lovely compliment. I'm adding some gesso on my brush right now. I want to get a little bit more control. I'll be honest, the painting on the bisqueware um, is actually, the bisqueware is actually even more, uh, it, it, it really, the color really spreads on the bisqueware. It explodes on the bisqueware more than, uh, more than watercolor paper. So it's kind of fun and wild to paint with it. I'm going over top of some of these strokes with the gesso just to get a little bit more control. You can see that there, just a skosh more control. Here is my gesso. I have a little mixing palette here. You want to make sure if you are going mixed media with these, and really this whole week is about mixed media because everything that I'm doing with these ornaments, I am adding inks, I'm adding um, gesso, which is essentially acrylic. Um, so you want to just be very aware of potential com contamination with your palette. And you don't want to put your now gessoed brush back in your watercolor palette without rinsing and really rinsing well. All right. So let me just show you where we're at with the rose. I wanted her to be really soft and pastel-y. I'm going to let that area dry. I'm going to start adding in some greens. Now I want to mix a really lovely, creamy, sagey green. So I'm going to go this, this kind of bright olive color from my palette. I'm rinsing my brush and going into this soft, creamy pink. And you can see kind of that color I'm making. I want to make this a little less yellow. So I'm going to add some blue. And I'm going to add some of this like emeraldy green and a little more. Yes, look at that. Isn't that lovely? Can you substitute acrylic white paint for gesso? Absolutely. If you want to mimic kind of the consistency of gesso, just, um, you know, get yourself a little container. Wow, this particular ornament is wild. It is just, the color is spreading like crazy. Um, get a little container, squirt in a nice amount of um, acrylic, and then go ahead and water it down to the consistency you're after. Because um, gesso kind of flows. Gesso is like the consistency of almost like a, a runny, a slightly runny yogurt, I, I think would be a great, I have to remember to rinse my brush, um, a great comparison. So I'm going to go in while that leaf is wet with a little bit of that emeraldy green and just let that flow into that wet area. Same things apply. Wet on wet is still a thing. I'm going to go here. I have a weird, there we go. Remember, when you're painting, I mentioned this yesterday, something so important, and someone was asking earlier, like they struggle with loose watercolor. Um, when you are painting, and this doesn't apply just to loose techniques, but it's such an important thing to learn and get used to um, utilizing in your painting. When you're putting down a stroke, friends, if you, if you haven't been fully paying attention, this would be the moment. This would be the moment. I feel like a teacher. I totally feel like a teacher right now. You need to listen. Listen to me good. Now, um, when you're lay laying down a brush stroke, friends, you're either defining the actual area that the brush stroke is being applied to, right? Or, and this is where like you start to get next level with your watercolor journey. When you realize like what I'm doing here, I'm not just defining this area, the leaf area. I'm actually taking the opportunity to kill two creative birds with one brush stroke. And I am defining these rose petals. I'm cutting in, notching out, as I often call it. You see what I'm doing here? And it's when you realize that, that each brush stroke sometimes is tackling two three or more things visually in your composition, your whole painting outlook just, it just shifts. And the way you see the paper, the way you see um, your impact on the paper completely 
changes. See, it's become a, a more depth filled rose just by adding that green. Uh, let me see, let me see. Here you can't find similar ornaments. Yeah, so pretty. I'm just, I see some questions. The books you sell do only, um, oh, good question. So uh, the books that I sell, do any of them contain watercolor paper or is it just regular paper? So it's definitely, um, it is a watercolor paper in terms of the paper in my books is, it contains cotton. It's not a hundred percent cotton. And the, the paper also doesn't have that traditional, um, watercolor like cold press tooth it does have a tooth it has more of a texture than let's say a cold or a hot press um so it is watercolor paper but if you've only been using cold press in your journey um you might see a little bit of a learning curve with it um it was a paper that i painstakingly selected um Obviously, we have to take cost into consideration and things like that. So, um, and I also wanted a paper, like, so for example, there were other papers available that did have the more traditional cold press kind of texture, but they were thinner and I did not like the feel of them. And so this is where we landed with the paper for the books. And um, so in my newest book, The Mixed Media Adventures, um, all of my watercoloring books, um, the Art for Joystick Journal, all of that paper um, is the same. So, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of linear detail. You're welcome. Yes, absolutely. They're, the books are designed to be painted directly into. That's kind of their whole point. Yeah. I am using, I'm still using the number six round, friends. This is my new travel brush coming next year. Um, com coming early next year is my hope. Um, and I love her because when I say you can always use a number six round instead of a quarter inch dagger, I always say it with a really, comes to a really fine point. And that's why I love my round brush that I've been designing um, because it comes to the most beautiful, delicate, fine point. Oh, thank you. Thank you. These are still available. Um, the pansy and this kind of just whatnot flower. These are still available on ChristyRice.com along with a few others. And I'm just going to keep adding to that collection. All right. I got some gesso on my brush and I'm pressing down. I just want to add some lightness here, show you where we're at so far. There she is. There she is. Um, for your palette, I'm running out of some colors. Do I get a new palette or can I get the pans separately? Um, right now, we don't have the pans available separately. We're looking into that possibility with our manufacturer, but it's kind of difficult because of minimums and all that kind of jazz. So um, right now your best option is to pick up kind of a, a second palette as backup, um, but we are working on, on that issue for sure. I'm just adding, I'm letting the paint run out on my brush. I've got some gesso on there. I had some blue on there. I'm going to do a little bit more of that up here so you can see. I literally am not adding more anything to this brush. I'm just using what's on there. It is creating kind of a dry brush effect, and I, I like the feel of it. It's still gliding, but it's just creating this most lovely dry brush effect. Isn't that pretty? So pretty. All right, I'm going to go ahead and rinse this brush. Remember, if you're using mixed media, you want to really clean those brushes um, because uh, acrylic is polymer based. So it's not going to re wet and it is going, if you let it dry in the brush, it's going to ruin the brush. So we don't want that. I'm going back into this medium pink that I first mixed and used on this rose. And let's get in there and add some detail. I'm following the contour 
of this petal and kind of making these little C curves and then changing the angle and going around and accenting, um, accenting that curve, that kind of like saddle effect of rose petals where they curve and they've got little veins along the curve. I like, I really love um, highlighting those with my roses. And again, this is my personal style, my personal approach to roses. I just added a little bit of purple to the mix to get a strong color to add to the center here. And I'm just making a few more kind of C curve marks at the center, just subtle, just to add a little intensity, a little depth. And now I'm gonna go in, not reloading this brush, and I'm gonna add a few like wiggly, sketchy marks into areas of the rose with that darker red that I made by adding a little bit of purple. And I actually really like, it's soft, but it adds a lovely contrast. See those light marks that I'm making? Let's go to a scratch piece of paper. And I want to, I want to let this dry a little bit. Um, I want to show you some brush drills. Working with these ornaments, is the drying time the same with the watercolor? Or does it vary? Um, it's a little quicker would be my best um would be my best answer it's a little quicker but not much in terms of how long you know your page stays or your ornament stays dry all right here's a great brush drill for liner brush is to just load your brush and make these curved curly strokes over and over again to see how close you can get them how consistent of a line quality you can get. You can go slow as you want to make that happen. But you, the point is to get them as close together as possible and as evenly distanced as possible. And then a third is to make sure the line quality stays the same. So you have to keep your pressure even you have to kind of control your hand-eye coordination. See, I got a little too close there. And you have to control your how you're loading the color and the water on your brush. So it teaches you so much. And it also creates some really cool effects. So let me show you that with the round brush. You can do the same kind of drill. Make an S curve. Close. Same amount of paint on the brush. Now I'm feeling like I need to reload ever so slightly because I want to keep that consistent amount of paint. This is a great drill to train your hand-eye coordination, to learn about brush handling, to learn about how to load your brush to get the consistent results that you're looking for. Madeline says, if you make a mistake on the bisque or you just don't like how things are turning out, can you wipe it off and start fresh? Um, wiping it off, no. But what I would suggest, um, and I will show you on my little scrap bisque here. Um, now, depending on the color, I'm using some red here. And red, the red in my palette is a more higher staining red. Um, if it's just still wet, you can add water to it and kind of spread it out and then wipe some of it away, but you're still gonna have a surface that you can work with. Now, let's take a look here. This blue has been on here for over a year. It's not moving, right? But you could take a little acrylic and you could um, create a new, you could basically, you know, create a new surface and paint the whole thing with acrylic or just paint a darker color over it. So your best bet is if it's fresh, spray it down, let it set for like 20 seconds and then wipe it away and then just kind of let it dry and then deal with, you know, kind of create a new composition around, you know, the colors that have stained the bisque. So that would be my best advice for that. 
Let's go ahead and start a peony. Peonies are interesting. Well, there's so many different types of peonies, right? I'm going to really mix up a lovely creamy pink here. And it's basically the creamy pink from my Art for Joy Sake palette. Friends, if you don't have this palette yet and you are interested in it, Kelly's going to go ahead and put that code up for you. Um, I'll just speak to it a little bit because I know we have some new friends with us today. Um, I will tell, tell you this. I am a collector. Sorry, Kel, that's the brush link. I am a collector. Thank you. I have over 75 palettes. Um, and friends, I'm just going to cut in here. So we are going to start. This is a three-quarter view. We're going to start at the center. Man, I'll tell you, this batch of bisque today um, is just so explosive. It's a little disconcerting to work with. All right, we're going to start at the center, friends, and make a few of those C curves, but they're all kind of emanating from a base, right? They're meeting down here. I'm going to almost make a little V. See how that's happening? And all of these um, are coming up from that V and kind of curving like a lotus, right? And you're just going to continue that. And the, the petals in the front are going to be more horizontal and the ones on the side more vertical. And you're going to just keep continuing that idea. And I am using the same pink as I go here. And then you can start making some petals that are kind of facing or coming towards you. Right? These petals here are kind of composed of like three strokes. One, two, three. And then you can edit and kind of bring them together, right? I think you can see now where we're kind of going. It's a three-quarter view. Um, this is our center. Now you can go in with a little pink and red on your brush, not a lot of water, and start adding in some detail and cutting in some depth, right? But same idea, moving through, and then we're going to rinse our brush and keep it damp and go in and just do some blendy blend to soften those marks that you put down. And then we need to, I know it's hard, but we need to let this dry while it's in the ugly phase. It's important. I know it can be hard because you, when you're in the ugly phase of the painting, you just want to get it right. You just want to hit it. You just want to get at it, right? But we got to let it dry at a certain point. And we're very close to that point. I am now that this area is, all these areas are all wet. So I am using that to my advantage and lightly dabbing in to kind of signify some of the curves of these peony petals. I'm actually gonna make this all one petal, so I'm blending some of that softly. All right, so let me get this out of the shadow. You can kind of see where we're at with this peony. There you go. And I think I'm going to do a little bud. I'm going to rough in the bud here. Maybe a, a hint or two. Maybe a couple. Yeah, I like that. And that is just a few dabs with the brush. A little bit of the bright pink at the base of each of these. And that is a good start for our peony buds. Get it out of the shadow there. And there you have it. There you have it. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Judy. I appreciate that so much. All right. And then let's rough in a little green just so we can feel better about ourselves. I always say, whoa, look at that just exploding. Man, it is catching me off guard. And that's the thing with Bisquare. You're going to get finished. You're going to notice finishes feeling different. It's just the nature of the material. So, um, and then put a little 
hint of green. So I am adding gesso to my watercolor as I'm working here just to gain some control because I'm like, this batch is just a flow in and it's like, wow. I'm going on the side here, just getting a little green. And I love how this composition is kind of curving with the ornament. All right, let's go back to our rose here. I'm gonna let her dry in the ugly phase. Let her dry in the ugly phase. I'm gonna take a drink, friend. Sorry, you can hear my chair creaking. I apologize. Mm. Y'all, you're so kind to me. I appreciate you so much. All right, we're gonna get in here, a little bit of red. Let's get a good amount of that pink from the palette. Woo, look at that, isn't that nice? And then let's go ahead and get some creaminess in there, just a skosh. I'm gonna dab on a paper towel. Matter of fact, I always have these crumpled up paper towels and I will like hold them in my hand as I'm painting. All right. We're going to go in and we're going to start cutting in. There's a petal here and I want to accentuate it a little bit. So we're cutting in. going to get my brush cleaned off and damp. Go right below where I just cut in and blendy blend. And you're starting to build depth. All right. You can even go back in and increase that. Dab in a little red along where you just were, right on that line between the dry area and the damp area. I call this contrast detailing. I have a whole video with um, all the watercolor basic techniques. If you're new here, you're just starting watercolor. I'm gonna link that below after the live is done so you can go ahead and reference that. Let's go ahead and cut in another area right here. We've got three petals intersecting. I'm putting in a bright red and you're probably like, oh my gosh, what is she doing? Rinsing my brush, blotting the clean brush. And then I'm going to go in, blend, blot, blend, blot. And look what's happening. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm going to blend a little more. And I'm also pushing the color towards that edge I'm trying to define. And look what's happening. And this is a slow and steady process. Extremely cathartic. I love this process. Let's keep going. Friends, hit me up with your questions because I'm going to keep, I'm going to be repeating this technique. So I have got some brain space for questions. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna push that color right along the edge here that I'm trying to define. Push around with some water. So remember, not only am I defining the petal, I'm defining the petals around this petal, right? Work cramps my style. I love it. That is so funny. Thank you, Christy Ann. That's such a really helpful, super helpful, um, because I know folks have been asking so, um, so eager to get these ornaments. And so that is a great option. I'm going down here and adding a little bit, kind of like two little smiley faces and then blending them out. Got a little bit more water on my brush than I had with the other areas, but that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and contrast detail in some of that red. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. Isn't that pretty? Rinsing my brush. It's getting a little intense there. I wanna kinda rein things in just a little. So this damp, clean brush, go in there, rein that in gorgeous. Friends, just a little housekeeping what's coming up. If you're just joining us tomorrow, I'm going to be finishing some paintings that I've worked on throughout the year. And I'm going to be teaching about how to finish a painting. Um, what do you recommend to clean brushes with? Water. <laughs> I do not use, and I don't mean to sound sassy, um, but I do not use any type of brush cleaner. I know some people use Dawn, um, like, you know, uh, dish detergent. 
Um, I don't feel like you need the harshness of that unless you've got some brushes that are overloaded with some acrylic from, from mixed media work. But um, really clean water, multiple rinses, uh, lie them flat to dry, and you're good. You're golden. That's it. That's all. I'm going to go in here in the center and blend and soften a little bit. I don't have much control with this center because I mentioned earlier, these colors are, um, you know, the red pigments stain a little bit more. I'm gonna grab a little bit of gesso, stroke that onto that area, and then blend. And I am blotting adding some water to my brush. Remember friends, this all, all of this applies if you're doing mixed media on paper. It all applies. There we go. Just diffusing that center ever so slightly. Okay. All right, I want to define right here. Let me go in that strong color. I actually want to come at it from this angle. And go ahead and get some water in my brush, blot a little bit, and then blend it out. There she is. I'm going to go ahead with my liner brush, go back into detail mode here. A little bit of red, a little bit of pink. Blot, blot, blot on the paper towel. And then some, some of my linear detailing is shorter strokes, but they're all emanating from this area right here. I'm even going to cut down into it a little bit right there. How do you paint? So how do you paint small? I start out small, but finish with my flower taking over the page. Um, that, uh, I think what happens, especially if we're painting a flower that we're not um, as comfortable with, if we're still, if you're in the beginner phase, um, I guess what I'm saying is adding petals to a flower, which in turn, of course, keeps growing the flower. And I know exactly what you're talking about because I've been there and I still am there sometimes. Um, it's kind of like a visual coping mechanism for trying to perfect. It's almost like a, it's an overworking technique at times, if that makes sense. Um, so and I'm not one for formulas, but I am one for coming up with some comfort, um, comfort subject matter, comfort ways of approaching a medium and approaching a subject matter. I have a whole video about your comfort subject matter. And so I think the best way to kind of get out of some of those habits where you're continuing to add petals in the hopes that it will give you the look that you're after and you're just adding and adding and adding. And the next thing you know, you're like, you've got this massive flower, right? So I think, um, you know, brush drills can help with that. Also, I have another video about um, 10 second roses where you literally set a timer and you do 10 stroke roses or 10 stroke peonies or 10 stroke whatever it is. And that immediacy and doing that repetitively, I'm going to link that video below for sure, um, is going to teach you so much about um, shapes and, and, and it's going to kind of engage your instincts and really change things for you. And then I think after you do some of that kind of exercise work, um, you're going to start to feel a lot more comfortable um, in the strokes that you do place initially and you're not going to be finding yourself wanting to add all of those strokes again and again as an effort to perfect or refine. Um, I hope that makes sense. I, I hope I wasn't just rambling. But um, 
yeah, I think I do. I think the biggest one for you right now would to be do the 10 second rose or whatever, 10 second flower um, exercise. I think that would really help you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right, I'm going into back into my peony, peony land here. Um, and I am starting, I am actually starting to add some linear detail. This is going to be a looser peony, looser than the rose. I mean, the, let's face it, the rose is super loose too. Um, but this one's going to be even more loosey goosey. And I'm just adding, adding. I'm going to actually really go in with some gesso. And I'm just remembering that the strokes are all kind of heading towards this base here, right? That's where I want all of those strokes to land. What I love about mixed media, I wouldn't call myself a mixed media artist, but it's one of the topics that I get the most requests for, I'll be honest even though like I'm in watercolor land on, on Instagram or Instagram, hello, on uh, YouTube. What I love about mixed media is that you're constantly dancing between opacity and sheerness, right? And I'm going in here. See, I am adding a ton of opacity with this gesso right now but I'm still, I still have some gorgeous sheer moments as well. And you've got that contrast working hard for you, working hard for your composition. And it creates some of the most lovely, lovely effects. How loaded is your liner brush? Amazing question. I often say um, the best way to quantify it is 60% pigment, 40% water. Now, obviously, that is not an exact science. I have not measured that with the scientific specificity, <laughs> but that has been my best way to describe it. And I have heard from folks, they've had a lot of success using that kind of guide in general. Anyway, um, yeah, dancing between sheerness and opacity is just why I love mixed media with watercolor as the base so much. It's just good, good fun, right? Such good fun. I'm just dabbing into these little nooks and crannies where petals are meeting other petals and look at the definition that you're getting from that. Now that's strong. I'm going to let those little marks dry though. I am going to blend them, but I'm going to let them dry a little bit by design. I'm going to go into these buds and add a little bit of that opaque treatment just to keep the style flowing. Just a little hint and then a little, little dab of white there. I am blotting my brush. When you see me go off camera, I am blotting my brush on a paper towel. A little extra white there, a little extra white there. And remember, if you are bringing an acrylic into your into your piece, gesso, uh, remember that also can be watered down even more. So you're you're going to have levels of sheerness with and uh, let's talk about that actually while this is drying up a bit. You're going to have levels of sheerness even with a gesso, okay? So here is gesso. I'm going to add color to it so we can really see what the heck I'm talking about. Rinse, rinse, rinse. All right, get some color in there. So you can see that's a really opaque, let's bring it up here. See, I mean, it almost covers that mark that I was making, right? All those marks, it almost completely obscures them, right? Thank you so much, Chrissy. <laughs> I'm the rose queen. Oh my gosh. You don't know how much that means to me because I, I, I'm i always on the struggle bus with roses. You have no idea. All right. And now look, adding some water 
next to it and doing that pulling or that ombre technique as I call it. And remember, this is a this is an acrylic base. So literally look at this, how you can go from the most opaque at the heaviest application, but remembering that that opaque paint that you've created with gesso and watercolor or acrylic and watercolor has different levels of opacity as well compared to a traditional watercolor opacity. So there's the pink applied, just straight watercolor applied really heavy, no gesso, no acrylic. And then of course you have your different levels of sheerness. Ooh, and a little blue in there. But look at, look at this. Look at this variety that you get. This is this right here. Why I love mixed media right here, right? I just want to stop for a minute. Creamy, saturated, opaque marks. Bold, saturated, sheer marks. And you can get all of it. I love, love, love it. All right. I'm going to have to flip this little paper around. You guys want to see what's under here? I finished um, my, my studio. If you noticed, my studio is, is new. Um, I did do a video about the first phase of my studio re revamp, so to speak. But last night I finished my, my, my wall behind me. And so I completely, I had to do some cutting with razor blade and like, I completely destroyed my painting surface. And then I forgot that I did that so quickly. I just added a watercolor sheet over top of it this morning. Anywho. Um, but I'm going to have a new video coming out at, at, in January about the full reveal of the new studio. All right, let's get into it. I want to do something a little different. I want to do some sketching. I'm going to do another rose and we're going to do some sketching with our liner brush. All right. I'm going to be holding the liner brush here, kind of right above the top of the ferrule. And sometimes I'm going to be holding it here right in the middle of the brush, but here or here. Do you ever get afraid that gesso water will mix with your palette? Um, does it make the watercolor change consistency? So I have a double weld mixing pot. This is my painter's pot. Um, we do have some of these available, not this exact one on christyrice.com, but just two containers of water really, really helps that situation. So notice how my center well is clear color. And then this one is the opaque. So I actually mix or rinse my brush in an opaque area of my water mixing. And then I have a clean area. So that really helps things. But yes, it can, if you're not careful at like with the two water containers is my idea of careful. Um, it can contaminate your palette. Excellent question. All right, we are gonna do some watercolor sketching as I like to call it. Red and pink, red and pink, red and pink. We're gonna get that 60-40 going. You kind of want to create like a syrupy effect. Um, do you also have a videos available with your painting on um, watercolor paper? Oh yes, you just need to explore my channel. Like I've got like 400 videos. <laughs> so tons and tons and tons of, of videos. Yeah, you'll, you, yeah, we'll see you next year. You're gonna be busy. <laughs> All right. You want to create almost like a syrupy consistency. Let me see if I can, I really want to show you. Do you see that consistency? This is your 60, 40. Someone asked earlier, like, what is that consistency? 60% paint, 40% water. And that's what it looks like. Now we're going to see because this particular batch of, of ornaments has been a little cray cray with I, they just seem like they're finished differently. All right. Let, let, I'm going to blot. I'm going to be cautious and blot, blot, blot. And we are going to do some. All right. That works. I'm going to do some continuous line. Well, continuous-ish. 
Look at that. I am just using the same idea, C curves, stacking them like bricks, not right on top of one another, but with lines instead of strokes, like, you know, um, voluminous strokes. We've got lines here. I love doing this. It, you can go right into some linear detailing, loosey goosey, crazy town. Love this. So fun. But wait, 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 wait. This is technically the ugly phase of this kind of approach. But I honestly don't think it's not ugly. <laughs> We need to be okay with like making fun of ourselves. We need to be out, and open, upfront about the fact that we are at a certain phase in our painting and it doesn't look the best. We don't, I don't want you to be self-conscious about it. I, it's a, just a straight up reality in your face fact that the beginning stages of your paintings are often crazy town and they don't look right yet. We just need to own it and talk about it. Seriously. Oh, see, look at that color just going ape crazy. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Look at that. What is it doing? What is it doing? Ugh, it's annoying, but it's okay. We're going to just get in there and be okay with it. See, just get in there and be okay. But look at the prettiness, even though this area is being a sassafras and not doing what I was hoping. I'm going to just be okay with it and make some changes. I'm just going to fill it in loosey goosey, get a little bit of a gesso base on there. And I'm, I'm okay. I'm not sad. I'm not crying over the spilled milk of those strokes, not looking as delicate as I'd hoped, but now I'm going to go in with this, I'm going to shear down, basically just add water to this syrupy mixture. And we are going to just do some really light washes. And I mean light. And look at her. Look at her pretty, pretty, prettiness. I love this effect. Isn't that so fun? Yes, double water containers. And honestly, triple sometimes. If you are a little more forgetful about which vessel you're rinsing in have a third one and you're going to be a lot better off yep so fun i'm going to let this dry because i'm going to go back into these leaves with this hopefully now that i've got the gesso on here it's going to give me a better base i can go back with some linear detail like i did with this rose honestly this is more of a transitional flower it's what i call them this could be a peony as well All right, back to the liner brush on Miss Peony here, and we are just going to hit it with the final-ish moments of linear loveliness to really bring her to life. Remember, your liner brush doesn't only have to make the thinnest of thin marks. See how I'm starting to make some thicker marks? I'm kind of go going at it from the side. And remember, with this three-quarter view, all of your strokes are emanating from a base and fanning out like a lotus, curling and fanning. All right, we have a giveaway to do today. I don't know, what, what should we give away? <laughs> Anybody want me to give away something in particular? Let's give away a palette. Kelly, let's give away a palette. Let's do that. And I have a special, it's a little bit of trivia today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a moment. We're going to do a giveaway. Get ready. Get ready to answer the trivia question. Are we ready? Are we ready? Let me know. We're about to, I'm about to drop the trivia question for today's giveaway, which is going to be the palette, the Art for Joystick palette. So let me know if you are ready to hopefully answer that trivia question. I am 
in the middle of adding some final linear detail to this peony, bringing her to life. Friends, these ornaments are for salesy on christyrice.com. They make the most incredible gifts. I'm not going to lie, friends. They are not cheap. They're not, but they're artwork. They're originals. And you know what? If you never buy a thing from me, I'm okay with that too. I am so glad you're here. But, you know, girls got to run a business. So that's why we're here to learn and, you know, maybe give you some gift ideas. But if you're just here learning, that's amazing too. Oh, look what I did. All right. If you make a mistake, like I just did, I went into my palette. I was in the moment and I got gesso on my palette. I'm going to immediately, sadly though, wipe this color away because I, I contaminated that little mixing area and that's it. You're done. You're good. You're golden. Now I do got to go and mix that color again because she was party. But that's all. No stress. Not too bad. A little bit of our pink here. All right. Good. All right. Ready for... I don't get in. I have your palette. Friends, if you win and you have my palette, just say so and we can do something else. No worries. All right. Um... Oh, thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. My nails right now are are in honor of my book launch which is next tuesday so friends we're we are going to be doing a book party on next tuesday so part of next tuesday's live is going to be about the book i'm going to paint in the book we're going to just have a good old time all right friends let's hit it the trivia question today what is the name of my beloved art teacher growing up what is her name First one to answer correctly. Give us a moment to figure out who that is if we have a couple responding. Um, but what is the name of my beloved art teacher growing up? I talk about her fairly often. I mentioned her on Monday's live, mentioned her by name. Let's see if anybody gets this one right. <laughs> no clue. <laughs> She, it's a, it's a she, she's a she, give you that hint. Haynes, Mr. Haynes, no. If we have to do a different question, it might be, a, we, may, we might have a newer crowd here, some, some newer friends. So that's okay. If we have to do a different question, we will do a different question. As I'm finishing up this one, guess I'm not winning the palette. <laughs> Ooh, Jack Alberti, that's a nice name. That is a very inspiring name. That was your, your art teacher, I love it. Oh man, no idea, no clue, oh man. I've asked this question before and folks have gotten it. I'm surprised, but that just means we have new friends. And that is a good thing. That is a good thing. All right, let's do a different one. Um, let's do, let's not do trivia. Let's do, um, I remember her last name is <laughs> Hand. Oh, Vicky. <laughs> yes. All right, Vicky is going to be our winner then. And then we're going to do a second giveaway. Uh, because I just feel inspired, Dr. Ruth. Um, Vicky is the winner of the first prize because she remembered the most important part of her name being hand. Um, so Vicky, ding, 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 you win the palette. Um, but let's do a second giveaway, a set of brushes um, to someone who has a birthday closest to today. I'll give Kelly a few moments to kind of figure out who wins that? And while I fix all of my bleeding issues here with this ornament, because it's just driving me up a wall, but it's okay. It's okay. 
you see how that bled so, so horribly? This will happen as you paint. You will have these moments and it's okay. All right, we fixed it. We're good. I remember too late. Vicky, Vicky did get, but you are correct. Her first name, Amber, is Sue. Um, but Vicky did get hand first. Um, so we're going to go with that. Um, so birthday close. Did we have a today birthday? Is that what happened? I was looking down. I was painting. I wasn't paying attention. Did we have a today birthday? Me. Oh, Aaron. Today is my birthday. Yay. Um, so you're just going to eat both of our winners, Vicki and Aaron. You're going to email Christy. Hello at ChristyRice.com. Attention, Kristen. And um, let them know what you want. Let her know what you want. And we will get that right out to you. Adding some touches of blue in here. That's so fun. All right. Friends, it was a pink day. It was a pink day. And yes, happy birthday, Erin. We're all just in the pink area today. I love it. I love it. I love it. Mm, I feel like I want to do something wild. So get ready. Get ready, friends. I'm just things are feeling too safe today. So just get ready for it. Ooh, I lost my son, but the light is so much better now. Yay. All right, here we go. Christy is on a rampage. I am going in with that intense blue. I mixed that blue from the brown and the blue on my palette. I That is one of my favorite mixes on this palette. The brown and the blue. Now this area is wet and I'm going to come back to it, but not before I continue on. The edges of these uh, ornaments are painted, treated with much love and attention. Going in with the gesso and creating this kind of almost like an oil painting, painterly effect. Do some textury moments in there. Grab some more blue and remember you're not just detailing the area, you're, you're immediately on, you're detailing the areas around. I need to do a whole video on that concept because that I think could be an aha moment for many of you on this lovely journey. Oh, I'm so glad I added this background. Woohoo! Being bold, being fearless, being just throwing caution and care to the wind with your watercolor painting usually pays off big time. Just going to put that out there. And I am just filling in into the, the negative space, the space that isn't the flower per se. That is your negative space. While I'm doing that, I am taking the opportunity to add detail to this leaf, to add detail to the flower. I'm cutting in. Oh, Blick Art is here again. Yay, welcome, welcome. Heard some people were painting over here, I love it. We are indeed painting, always, always, right? All right, cutting in, getting wild and crazy over here with the gesso. Remembering, trying to remember not to contaminate.
happened. I know what happened. Can you hear me now? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wait till I tell you what happened. I can't believe I did this. <laughs> I was at, okay. So when I was silent, you couldn't hear me. I'm like, oh, Kel that must be Kelly's way of telling me time is up. No, Christy didn't plug in her phone or her other camera and my phone died. Um, <laughs> so... Well, friends, honestly, it is time to wrap up, truly. So let me show you where I was at, because I'm not exactly sure when, uh, you know, it wouldn't be a Christy alive if we didn't have technical difficulties, right? Because that's just how I roll. All right. This is where I was at with this loosey-goosey craziness, and I just had to add this background, right? I think that was a good, oh, it matches my hair, my hair scrunchy thing. Hey, by the way, what do we think of the hair? I added pink. I'm 45 years old. I'm adding pink to my hair. My son liked it. Anyway. Oh, thanks, Sheila. You said that before I even asked. All right. So there's this one, friends. Remember, these are going to be available on ChristyRice.com today. I hope, I actually have a crazy day. I'm really going to try to get these up today. They might not be up until tomorrow. We shall see, but I'll leave you in suspense. Um, <laughs> never lost your smile for a second. Well, that's true. Um, here's this one. Friends, I'm going to finish her off camera like I've been doing with the others. I don't know how I'm going to finish her. It's going to be a surprise. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to do a background. I, I just don't know. But we shall see. And this lovely, she's almost done. This is pretty much what she's going to look like when she's up on the site. Yeah, I really love her. And just a reminder, these are some of the ones that are still available. Everyone keeps saying how much they love this one. And I, she hasn't gone yet because I know she's not cheap. I know. Um, but everyone really loves this one. I, I can't wait to see who actually picks it up and gets to give or take it home for themselves. So anywho. All right, friends, here is the thing. Tomorrow, I hope you join me. Tomorrow will be at 12 p.m. Eastern time. I will be painting, finishing paintings from this past year and talking a lot about why I'm making the decisions I'm making as I paint talking about composition, talking about color theory. I mean, when you're finishing a painting, friends, all the things come into play. So don't miss tomorrow. And then I'm going to be making some of those finished paintings available tomorrow as well, which is so exciting. It happens once a year. I release my originals. So, all right, friends, thank you for today. I'm sorry I didn't plug in my phone and uh, we had a technical glitch, but, you know, it always makes for some fun moments that we can laugh about. So until I see you again, I wish you so much happy painting.